all right guys welcome back to the channel uh what a 24 hour period it has been guys it has been uh a, a good one um so we're gonna get into a few things i just wanted to get on really quick make a quick video show you guys some things in the charts that i'm looking at and uh just talk over a few things so the first thing that i it actually had me laughing last night and then this morning when we held that 74 ish uh level i you know yesterday was a, a lesson for for some people so let's get into it guys this is what had me laugh, laughing last night uh bitcoin etf flow over here on far side you can see the last few days we have had some pretty you know some fairly big outflows uh from the bitcoin etfs on the fourth we had 541.1 million dollars worth of bitcoin outflow and yesterday we had 116 million outflow uh but what's interesting guys is yesterday on the on election day blackrock right here in this first category who rarely rarely sells guys i think they've had a, a, under a handful of days where they've actually seen outflows yesterday they saw 44 million dollars worth of bitcoin outflow from ibit and that if you look down here at their maximum outflow day that was their biggest outflow day ever since they they got ibit launched so guys this this was a big uh lesson for a lot of these institutional buyers um probably a lesson for for um for blackrock you know i think they've done pretty well in really you know uh talking the bitcoin um talking Bitcoin up really, um, as a, as a store of value, as a flight, flight to quality, all of that, they've done a really good job, but yesterday they couldn't keep their, uh, clients from, from coming out. And guys, a lot of people, you know, probably because of the election, uh, didn't want to, didn't want to face that volatility that had a possible up or downside, but Here's the here's the lesson guys you shouldn't really be day trading or even swing trading bitcoin in my opinion you know 94% or something it's it's over 95 or no, over 90% of people that day trade in bitcoin end up losing um it's just not something you want to do we only have um, I think it's something like 10 or 15 days like we saw yesterday every year where Bitcoin makes its gains. Um, the, the rest of the time we're consolidating, we're, you know, making smaller moves, but these big volatile, volatile days, you don't want to be out of the market and get left behind. And that's exactly what happened to a lot of these uh, ETF providers and the institutions that decided to sell the last few days so uh kind of had me laughing because guys these big institutions especially you know blackrock um and their clients um and i'm not saying all of their clients obviously there are some retail uh that that do um use the etfs especially 401ks and whatnot but these institutions um and BlackRock, especially, you know, the world's largest, most powerful asset manager. Uh, I would love to, I, I don't know, guys, I love to see days like this where, where they're selling out and yet we're gaining. So let them sell their Bitcoin for once to us, back to us. And let's make some money doing it. You know, let, let's. You know, th that's why we hold. That's why we hodl, uh, you know. So anyways, guys, you know, I'm all for the underdog. And uh, 
I think this this was a good day for the underdog. You know, we had we had these big boys selling out, and uh, if if you were smart enough, had a plan, stuck to your guns, and just hodled, uh, you're probably celebrating today. So, anyways, guys, there's that. Uh, I do want to show you a few other things, but before we get into that, guys, I am uh, kind of spotlighting Rory Rescue Ranch here um, on the channel all of this month. So if you guys can go over, if you have a couple bucks, anything, uh, go over to their page here. I do leave these links in the description of my videos all month long. Uh, go over here, hit uh, shop to support. And you can you can send them something from their Amazon wish list. You can buy a shirt or some merch from Bonfire or Printify, uh, or you can just donate via PayPal or Venmo here. So, guys, good cause here. Uh, buy yourself some good karma. Donate a buck or two. Really appreciate it on my my end. So, uh, head over there and help them out. Okay, so on to the next. Thing that I've got. Um, obviously, tomorrow we have the FOMC meeting. We're going to have that uh, conference um, speech from Powell, and they will be announcing rate changes or whether we're staying the same. Now, guys, uh, yesterday when I got on here, we had about a 98% chance that we were going to have that 25 basis point cut. And we are still seeing that. But what's interesting is yesterday we had a 2% chance that we would actually not get a cut. Since yesterday, it's actually flipped. That 2% is actually now on the uh, side of us getting a 50 basis points cut. So more than likely... Same same deal. We're probably going to get that 25 basis point cut, but things have improved since yesterday. So just interesting. Uh, always something to watch. Um, and I guess we'll we'll kind of see what Pal says. Uh, keep an eye on his speech. And, you know. If he leans to the, the right or the left, markets are going to go up or down. You know, everybody hangs on every word of, of Powell. But um, it is always interesting to watch and see what he says if he lets something slip. So I will definitely be watching that. Um, and I might get on and, and stream it I if I can figure out what my technical problems were uh, last time. Because I did try to try and stream uh, a month and a half ago when, on their last video and couldn't get things to work out. So anyways, guys, the next thing I want to jump over to the charts and show you guys a few things that we've, we've got going. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, this is on the daily chart. Um, so this last daily candle, you can see, we just like took off and right now we're sitting just below 76,000. <laughs> You know, today's just been continued to be slowly climbing up. So, um, but the one line that I've had drawn for a few weeks at least is this this line that goes back to August uh, 20, it actually started August 29th. You can see it, it uh, we came down off this peak here and we bounced and and made our first contact with this this line here we came came back down bounced up got rejected here uh bounced up just got rejected a week and a half or so ago right here at this line rejected down and yet and today uh we are we are above it right now guys if you can see that we are uh just above it um probably just by a few hundred dollars or so. So it will be interesting to watch and see if we do close this, this daily candle above this line that has acted as resistance for a couple months or so. Other than that, guys, we've broken through that all-time high 
that I was talking about in the video yesterday. We are basically in blue sky breakout territory. Um, so this was the only line of resistance that I really, really had my eye on. Uh, if we break that, we, you know, we could uh, continue going up, you know, up, up, up. Um, one thing to note, though, guys, and I was kind of talking about this yesterday, is we get into this parabolic zone. And I know because I've lived through, you know, three of these or so, you know, I've been in this since 2012. And I know how these these parabolic moves work. They're very euphoric. But guys, you know, we let's delete this. Um, we do have those times it's not just like euphoria euphoria all the time every second of the day you know you'll go up uh like we did today we just hit above 76 and now we're we're down you know and you're always you're always bummed because it's not at the all-time high you know for <laughs> for too long you know we go up and then we come down and we consolidate but guys as I've always said on this this channel during these upswings, you look at these and you, you know we're going up, 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 up. You know this was a nasty drop for a few days, uh, but this one right here, and this one's a small one, guys. Ah, oh, where did I go? Uh, let's see, let's see if I can get back to that. Um actually clear back here okay so i was looking right at this drop this was the last bull cycle uh in 2020 2021 uh this was 2020 november of 2020 so exactly four years ago we you know we started breaking out and we hit this and we over three days we did this which ended up being a 17% drop in like three days, guys. That's some volatility. But, you know, we'll have these euphoric moves for days and days and days. Um, and then we'll hit these little blips, you know, and you'll, you'll, it'll be hard. You know, it's not all uh, smiles and sunshine, even during these parabolic moves. So just be aware of that. Uh, just so you guys know what to expect, how to, how to, um, control your emotions. Um, if you look clear up here, you know, I mean, you zoom out on this guys and this just looks straight up, but that was a 17 or 18% drop right there. Then we got up to this guys and this one uh was this was a 32 percent drop right there okay so th this is the thing guys even during these parabolic moves it will test your stomach okay uh just just bringing it up because i i want people to be aware of that you still need to hold to your plan if you've got a plan you know just know how to manage your emotions um, because we are coming into that that banana zone that parabolic move now after this this months and months of just sideways action we're finally breaking out of that so uh just be aware it's not all up 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 and to the right so um that said guys um they're really isn't a whole lot why did i move that uh there's there really isn't a whole lot of barriers as you can see uh we've broken out above that all-time high we're now we're breaking out above uh this this kind of short-term trend line but even if we don't break above that short-term trend line right away guys that is a pretty steep um trend line so let me just zoom in here you know this even if we just bounced around under this trend line uh by the let's see 
where would that put us by the end of the year? We would be, um, we'd be right about 89,000 at the end of the year, which isn't that bad. Uh, could be better, I think. I think we can do better than that in the next few months. But, you know, all I'm saying is this resistance line, even if it's tougher than, than we think and we just kind of bounce around under here for a while, it is an incline. So um, it's, it's not a real bearish, uh, you know, resistance to be bouncing and, and kind of rejecting off that is what I'm saying. Um, the only other thing guys we're above, we're in all time, all time high territory, blue sky breakout. Uh, the only other like resistances that we could kind of look at, uh, is we could pull Fibonacci, uh, retracement levels, which let's just do that really quick. Um, there's probably a few we could do, but let's just do uh, from back here where we broke out off this ETF uh, news. Um, let's pull that and down to our, our bottom when we hit like 49 or 48,000. Um, okay. So if we do that, we, we can see our, our Fibonacci retracement levels. Um, really, we're right here. Next, next level in the Fibonacci is this 1.6, uh, 1.618 level right here, which coincidentally lines right up at 89,000. Now, if you guys have been watching my other videos, there was one video where I did say, once we break out of all time highs, I would expect a, uh, a little bit of resistance at that 89,000 level. And that wasn't based on the Fibonacci level. It's actually kind of a coincidence that that level is right at 89,000. But the 89,000 uh, really, in my mind, the reason it's going to be a resistance is because there is a theory out there, the 5.3 theory, which doesn't hold much weight in my opinion. Uh, but according to that theory, Bitcoin will hit $89,000 this cycle, and that will be an all-time high that Bitcoin will ever get to, ever, ever, ever. So, you know, saying that, I think it's quite ridiculous to even really prescribe to that theory because it's just not a sustainable theory. Obviously, we will break through $89,000 in the future. Now, when that happens, I don't know. I, I would actually in my opinion i think we do that by the end of the year um but it it could take longer um but but we will break through that 89000 but it is a theory out there a lot of people do uh really buy into it and i do think it will be a resistance area especially now that I see that this Fibonacci level lines up exactly right there. So we do have that level uh, as kind of a, a resistance, a possible resistance. Um, I would expect a little bit of psychological resistance right around 100,000 as well, uh, just because it's that, that psychological number. You know, we always see resistance at, at big levels like that. So... Uh, and then we've got the 2.618 Fibonacci level right at around $113,000. So that's that's kind of what I would be looking at right now. Once you get into these blue sky territories, there's not much that you can look to for, for levels of resistance. Uh, Fibonacci is one of them. Um, and usually that's that's a pretty good one to go by. But you could also pull... Uh, Fibonacci from the previous high, which let's just do that really quick. Be interest, interesting to see what um, what that tells us. So we'll go off this previous high all the way down to the bottom of the bear market. And that 
looks like it puts our uh, 1.618 right at about $104,000. So this is obviously we, we're going back several years to, to record off that high um, and our low in 2022, the end of 2022. So the, these levels are a little more long term. Uh, that's why our our first Fibonacci level is is clear up at a hundred and uh, what did I say one hundred and four thousand. Um, but still interesting to kind of know that level. Anyways, guys, that is really about it. Um, I I expect I'll be on tomorrow, whether I stream the FOMC meeting or not. Uh, even just to give you guys an update on what he said. Um, so if you guys like the video, please, please, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.